So, uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, here we have uh, Stefano Esposito, who is uh, a project manager and youth worker in uh, Eco Greece, an NGO that uh, organizes environmental and sustainability, more correctly, programs and projects, and works with uh, young people. Um, Stefano, you can uh, you can share your screen and you can start. Okay, okay, okay. Thank so, you for being uh, with us today. No, no worries. No. Uh, so, hello, everybody. I don't know who's like. Uh, I cannot really see you, but it's it's okay. Don't worry. I understand it. Like it's uh, quite late for everyone, so we are all quite tired. So I will try to just give some hints of what we do. Uh, because I believe that this is also an Erasmus project. So, I mean, that's what we mostly do at the ECHO. We work in different uh, fields. Uh, so, one second. Okay. Let As you load your screen, sorry, sorry for interrupting. Uh, everyone, of course, you should uh, listen carefully to Stefano and uh, make your notes about things you would like to ask afterwards. No, I mean, let, let's say, ah, yeah, no, no worries. No, I mean, actually, if if there is any there are any questions, just maybe tell me your name first, so at least I can try to remember. But uh, don't worry. Uh, so okay, so basically, like uh, what we do at uh, at Echo, it's uh, we mostly work in the Erasmus Plus. We are an uh, an NGO that uh, was established in uh, in two thousand thirteen, so few few years ago. And uh, okay, at the beginning it was mostly Greeks. Now we are kind of taking over as international. So we are a little bit uh, diversified, but uh, as you can see, we work in the field of youth empowerment, integration, inclusion, sustainable development. Uh, I would kind of say that these are like uh, a lot of buzzword, uh, still like quite difficult to understand what do they mean. It's like, you know, you might hear a lot of concepts. Uh, it's, you know, like, quite too complicated sometimes we forget that we should be quite uh, easy when we communicate and interact with young people younger generation uh so yeah as I, as i was saying like uh these are some of the fields that we work into uh we are all like at the moment we have uh, we are two project managers and we have some external helps so some interns and um, and some assistant to the project manager so they just started working working with us uh, now there is just like some some pictures of some of the projects that uh, that we did um but i will skip a little bit this part uh, because it's not really uh, it's mostly pictures and uh, okay, so our our mission is to create a more inclusive society. That's why we use the approach of non-formal education. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows what is non-formal education. Do you? No, maybe. Okay, I will. I will put some some things on on the way. So <clears throat> let's say that like a. Uh, um, we we are like now facing a society where like uh, we are imposed to approach uh, just a standardized uh, approach to the education, and uh, if we fail into doing so, we feel like failures, and that's like um, it's like quite sad. That's why like uh, around the eighties, it started developing a new concept uh, that it's a non-formal education. That it's uh, it's more like. Uh, let's say like workshop, games, uh, experience, exp experiential learning. Uh, so it's a learning by doing. And uh, it's usually mostly about fun. And it's not uh, about learning a topic uh, too much into deep, but uh, it's more about, uh, let's say, developing the so-called uh, soft skills. So let's say that through the non-formal education, you are developing uh, um, public speaking, leadership, team building. Uh, I mean, Let's say that at the moment, most of us are like uh, doing universities uh, and having this kind of diplomas. So I don't know if you say it as well, but in Italy, we say we compare the university diploma to a toilet paper because like it's not really that useful, but uh, because everyone has it. So it loses the, 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 the power, you know, you're not any different than other people. 
and that's why it comes into play the um, the non-formal education so the more soft skills you have the more like you can make a difference uh, into the working environment so again like uh through all the programs that we try to develop, uh, we focus for sure on the environment, that it's quite a trendy topic. Uh, we focus a lot on the active citizenship. When we speak about active citizenship, it means that uh, uh, we would like to foster into people's mind, young people's mind, uh, to take an active role uh, in the political aspects. I mean, no one is asking you to become a, a policy maker, so also because it requires a lot of expertise but uh, at least you know to undertake something that it's uh, you know um on the cv society level so like i mean taking care of the promoting human rights values uh, promoting the aspects related on uh, climate change uh, lgbtq and uh, all these minority that uh, that deserve to have the same rights because I mean, at the end of the day, someone can be richer or poorer, but we are all human beings. Youth empowerment, because as we all know, it uh, like a lot of uh, young people are, are left behind. Uh, we are aging quite fast in the Western society and all the programs are developed and structured around the elderly and older generations. And uh, we are not really taking into account uh, the importance and relevance of a uh, younger generation. Intercultural dialogue, I, I don't even need to mention the fact that uh, we are now 27 countries in the European Union. Um, we are living in a globalized world uh, and it's mandatory to uh, develop a more open-minded approach uh, because, I mean, that's the only way to, to move on and to survive and to respect each other. Because if we want to receive respect from other people, we need to be the first one to respect. And finally, of course, international cooperation, it's because Erasmus itself as a program starts uh, as an idea of uh, uh, cooperating with uh, within like the European Union and uh, outside. Okay, so I will go like quite fast here, but as I was telling you, this is our, our team. Uh, so by the names, you might see that there are some Greek names, but uh, also like something a little bit more different, like Kuczynskaite. Well, uh, so she's a, a colleague of mine, a project manager, and she's from Lithuania. We both came here through an Erasmus, Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs. I will mention it later. Uh, but okay, uh, this is like um, our intern was making this presentation, so she made it a lot of colorful. Uh, you can like in case you might be interested in like the projects that we carry on, uh, of course, like uh, you need to also be active on the uh, digital means on the social media. So we have Instagram, Facebook, uh, uh, YouTube somehow, and also LinkedIn. But uh, now I will focus a little bit more on this part of the presentation because uh, so Erasmus uh, was developed as a, as a program, uh, um, Okay, I will make us an historical background. We were the ones who started the two world wars and we created a lot of damages, uh, not just in Europe, but everywhere. So uh, in, in Europe, they were like, okay, we need to try to find a solution for that. So maybe let's try to make an economic uh, organization. Then these things developed quite a lot. And during the Cold War, they realized uh, that uh, if you want to compete with the USSR, former USSR and uh, states, you need to become to create a, a new pole. And that's why the European Union became from an economic point of view and we turned into a more political, let's say. Let, we, we undertook the path, it's still not completed, but that was the idea. And uh, how to create this beautiful idea that is the European Union, it's not just by cooperating with each other, but by fostering uh, a European citizenship. And that's what uh, Erasmus was, uh, was all about at first. Uh, of course, like uh, uh, Erasmus is divided in three main key actions. So we have key action one, key action two, and key action three. Uh, it's like, yeah, I mean, these are still quite the names, but uh, we will stick to that. When we speak about key action ones, 
we are talking about uh, uh, in the mobility of individuals. So probably most of you have heard uh, the like have experienced Erasmus Plus uh, for studies, and uh, maybe some of you might even done uh, a trainership abroad. Uh, well, if you haven't do it because it's like uh, it's it's insane and it will change your life. And um, but in addition to these programs, there is also the the youth mobility. So we have youth exchanges and uh, training courses. These projects are basically, uh, let's say, seven days, 10 days program where you just meet with other people from all over Europe and you have a topic uh, like it's the project can be about everything. It can be about disabilities, LGBTQI plus community. Um, it can be about uh, social sciences, psychologies, uh, yoga, um, whatever topic you have in mind, there is a specific project just for that. And, um, and it develops around non-formal education. So it's mostly like games, uh, experiencing with other people and uh, learning by doing. So you are like uh, learning something without understanding it or indirectly and, uh, learning. And at the same time, you're making friends and it's uh, and you are having a lot of fun. Like uh, it's really, you create a small family, a small community. Uh, as ECHO, we, we undertake uh, a lot of key action once when it comes to send people abroad, uh, but we are also like uh, organizing the project ourselves. And most of the time the participants are like quite happy. And uh, I know that it's gonna sound a little bit weird, but uh, when you see people crying, it means that you did a good job because it means that like they really love the project and the people and you created uh, a nice and safe environment for everyone. Um, <clears throat> then uh, right now, like uh, our main focus, it's, uh, it's on the key action too. So when we speak about Key Action 2, uh, we speak about cooperation among organizations. Um, in this case, I will like think about a house, okay? So you want to build, uh, build up a house. In order to do it, you need an architect. You need someone that design the project. That's going to be the coordinate. And of course, if you want the house to be working, hopefully you will need like the workers to put the bricks, you will need someone to put the electricity, someone, some plumbers, like the windows, uh, and you will want to cover it uh, like with the ceiling, not to get some water uh, or rain. Uh, and that's exactly how the project is structured. So everyone brings an additional added value to the project in order to create the final output. And in order to see how the project is going to happen, you need to have some... Uh, time to time, uh, um, let's say, check up to see that uh, all the progresses are, are uh, going uh, on, the, on the proper way. So uh, as you see, like here, there are a lot of names, so I will not focus on all of them specifically, but uh, let's say that uh, like here you can see Green Influencers. It's, uh, it's a project about the environment where we were carrying uh, on a local level some uh, environmental activities. You can follow us at the uh, hashtag Greenfluencers on Instagram. Uh, it was it's very funny. We have a lot of memes, uh, a lot of tips and tricks on uh, how to become more environmental friendly, and we are also promoting. Uh, we also promoted because the project is finished, but we also promoted some uh, eco-friendly businesses in Spain, Greece, Slovenia, Portugal, and Italy. So it it is a very cool project. Uh, then the second one, it's uh, it's way complicated, the title, but it's mostly about circular economy. So it's another thing. So now a lot of people are speaking about uh, circular economy and what it is. It's mostly a process where we are trying to reintroduce everything and to recycle everything uh, into the, the main process. Uh, in this one, we created a manual where, like, let's say, uh, someone can self-reflect on all the processes of that the uh, products that you buy undertakes and try maybe to to you know like before you buy it think it twice uh, and maybe to think about how you can reintroduce, reintroduce it uh, into the cycle 
And uh, okay, let's play like, uh, youth SDG. It was mostly conference about uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, Jure you, it's a project about uh, uh, citizen journalism. So it's an alternative way to approach uh, journalism. And because, you know, like uh, in the Western country, I mean, not really in Greece, I'm sorry to say that, but uh, like there is a freedom of speech and expression and uh, and there is a free media. Uh, Greece was like, uh, for the second year, it was uh, awarded as the worst country in Europe uh, regarding this uh, media literacy part. Uh, but you need to think about it like uh, outside these Western countries, uh, if you go, let's say, to Egypt uh, or to Congo or whatever, you cannot say whatever you want as a journalist. You are constantly under the risk and the fear of death. And maybe something you, you cannot really receive the information and promote it globally. That's why we speak about citizen journalism. So to empower people to have the means necessary to promote their ideas uh, independently and hopefully more transparent as possible. Um, okay, then we have Hermes. It's, uh, I mean, these are mostly cooperation with some university, but then I would like also to mention maybe uh, YTC, that is Young Entrepreneurs in Time of Crisis, that it's a project where uh, we, we are creating the guidelines and input for young people to start uh, their own businesses uh, by using the good practices that were they started during the during the um, the COVID time. So we interviewed people that created a business when COVID hit us. So whenever like we are trying to you know in reverse uh, the process. I mean, like I know that a lot of people were super depressed during COVID, but uh, it's like there were also other people that motivated themselves and they did actually cool something very cool. And uh, another thing, it's like a Youth Finance Academy. So it's a project about financial literacy. So when you were in school, people taught you how to make equations. They really didn't tell you that uh, if you have 100 euros in a month, you cannot spend 150 and hope to survive. So this project is about uh, uh, like teaching you in a fun way how to use, how to administer like your own finances. And then, sorry, last one, it's uh, Interact, that it's a platform for intercultural uh, competencies. So how to understand um, like more people that have a different culture than, than you. I'm sorry, but I know that I'm speaking a lot. Anyway, these are uh, key action three. Let's say that if key action one is mobility of individuals and key action two is cooperation among organization, key action three merge them both. So you have both uh, things happening at the same time. And the main idea is to promote something that it's a political feedback uh, for the policy makers. So let's say that it's a way for the European Union to empower like uh, the European population to speak out loud and to like uh, ask for more rights. And uh, by the way, since there are some Greeks, uh, this project is about vision, it's about video making and um, policy making and European youth goals. And we are going to have some trainings about uh, digital storytelling and, um, and uh, video making, like how to start and media literacy. So if you are interested, uh, check on our page of Echo Greece. Uh, because the project is going to be quite cool. And I don't know if uh, FIBGAR is from Spain, but uh, there is also a Spanish partner. It's from, like, it's called uh, Associ Asociación Amigos. De... Uh, okay, I can, uh, if you are interested, there is also the Instagram page and there is the Spanish partner, but uh, it would, like, it's quite interesting as well. The EEA grants, uh, it's a project on about, uh, let's say, uh, how, to re, um, how to counteract uh, the domestic violence and the gender-based violence itself. Uh, but it's, it's for Greeks and it's in Greek, so I cannot really share too much with you because uh, it would be like quite difficult to read uh, in Greek. Um, and then we are also fostering like uh, some solidarity projects. So we work so with some volunteers 
and we ask them uh, uh, which projects they would like to carry. They write all the project and then they do everything on their own, mentored by and coordinated by us. So for example, this was about the uh, environment and this one it's just finished and it's about how to empower migrants and refugees with the uh, theatrical activities in order to let them, you know, like find the place in the society. And it was like, it was very, very nice. And then just for like, a, this is just a suggestion, but um, there are a lot of money, okay? A lot of money. Take them as much as you can, do every project that you can. There is European Solidarity Corps, there are Erasmus Youth Exchanges, for studies, training courses, trainership, volunteering, uh, Erasmus for young entrepreneurs. I mean, until you are 30 years old, uh, try to as, take as much as possible because then you will just enter the labor market and then you are screwed, pardon, my, pardon the language, but uh, you're going to have a lot, of, uh, a lot of issues afterwards. But do it because it's, uh, it's a really life-changing uh, situation. And... So, I mean, this is like just a short uh, general, like not really short presentation, but um, well, thank you for, uh, for listening. And uh, I don't know if you have any questions in general, uh, maybe I can stop the presentation, but um, if you have any questions or like uh, doubts uh, or like uh, curiosity, Maybe not to ask me how much money I'm making, but uh, if it's uh, remunerative to enter the field, uh, uh, like if you're good enough, it is. Like uh, it definitely is. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefano. Uh, before anyone asks any questions, would you like to tell us a bit more about uh, your, uh, your personal experience in the field? How did you end up? You, you said something about the the young entrepreneurs uh... yeah so uh okay so i tried to i tried to run away from italy like uh, since i was quite young and uh, thanks to the university i did many erasmus so i was in romania then i went to georgia and uh, then i also went to finland uh, like with an internship uh, and uh, I, I just met like some people that um, they were, uh, they experienced, they did this Erasmus for young entrepreneurs. And like, I, I was amazed by that, to be honest, you know, like I was, uh, wow, that sounds like a, a very nice thing. So, um, so I just started digging into the project. Oh, just, sorry, one second. <clears throat> okay, so. I started digging uh, into the into the projects, trying to understand what it was. And of course I was like, uh, after I graduated, I will be unemployed. Uh, so I definitely need to do something. And, uh, and I had this idea of creating an NGO. Um, so I started working on it. Uh, and uh, okay, I will not hide the fact that my first choice was to go to Denmark because my ex-girlfriend was living there back in the days. So I was trying to combine, uh, you know, to kill two birds with one stone. Uh, but then, okay, COVID happened, a lot of things happened. So many things changed. And finally, like uh, I was just having some interviews with some entrepreneurs that would host me. Uh, and uh, I had two offers, like one from Belgium and one from Greece. And I was like, okay, I will end up in Belgium anyway. So let's try to go to Greece first. Also because my idea was working with migrants, uh, not specifically refugees, but in the migrants field. And uh, so Greece, it was like, you know, uh, it would, would be like a nice framework for, for, uh, for everything. So I worked here, I developed uh, the, the idea that I had uh, and uh, I got familiarized with, uh, with this huge word that is Erasmus. And after uh, the project ended, uh, they offered me to stay longer. And I was like, uh, I mean, of course, why not? I didn't have any plan in the near future. And, uh, you know, like if you maybe someday you would like to start your own company, uh, you need the network 
you need to learn uh, as much as possible and enlarge the thing so so i i took it and then like uh it's a it has been like two years now the, that I accepted it, let's say. So I'm I'm working full time. I'm traveling a lot. I mean, once every month I'm somewhere else. It's even tiring, but uh, I'm seeing a lot of people. I'm meeting a lot of people and they're paying me for traveling. So that's kind of the dream, you know? Yeah, that does sound awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are there any questions from the chat? I think at some point I saw Elena raising her hand. Oh, okay. I see uh, a question. Yeah. Okay. What would you kindly suggest for those who want to use Erasmus Plus but are 35 plus years old? Okay. okay. So, uh, look, age doesn't really matter. It's a number. Um, there are some projects that, okay, there is an age limit. But uh, this doesn't mean that you cannot really, uh, you know, enter this field because, uh, uh, like, if, if the youth exchanges are more for like uh, 18, 30 years old, uh, the the training courses is for like uh, everyone. There is no age limit uh, if not being uh, having a legal age, so over 18. So I don't know where you are from, if you are in Athens or like you are from another place, but um, uh, okay, you're from Athens. So there are a lot of organizations organizing local workshops uh, about Erasmus. Uh, they are organizing training courses. They are sending people for training courses. So you should just contact them, get in touch with them. And then, then, you know, like uh, you start uh, step by step. And of course, like if you, if you like it, um, I mean, you can also become a trainer, you know, like you can develop uh, the entire project uh, and uh, facilitate it by yourself. Of course, you cannot start from zero to hero. So there are some steps, but uh, trust me that uh, trainers, facilitators are working figures that are um, like jobs that are developing right now and a lot of people are relying on on Erasmus plus funds so so yeah uh, that that's a way and it's like super funny to be a facilitator and to be a trainer mm, I mean not youth exchanges you see a lot of drama but with the uh, with the training courses you 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 really you have the chance to train someone. Like it's out of the context now, but I did. Um, I was a trainer about human rights in the Netherlands, and um, the project went so smoothly, so well, and everything that uh, one of the participants, uh, who's uh, who did the coming out a few years ago, uh, he just started. He understood that he wanted to become an activist for uh, LGBT. And uh, he was traveling and he went also to Turkey and he started motivating people in Turkey to do the coming out. No, I mean, that, that was the, that was the, this was the thing, but, uh, but yeah, otherwise you can also use the, the Erasmus for young entrepreneurs and you can, there is no age limit for there and you can go for like four months uh, somewhere abroad uh, and you can cooperate with another organization in English or in Spanish, in I don't know the language, and it's free for everyone, and you get paid to be there. So that's that's a suggestion. I hope it was, you know, like uh, okay. I see the thumb up. Perfect. I don't know if someone else has any question. Oh, oh, uh, we have another question. Perfect. Uh, how do you recommend finding transfer? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. I'm really sorry to hear that. Um... Let me let me read the question out loud. Uh, how do yeah. you recommend finding trustworthy Erasmus programs? Because I had a really negative experience uh, in a youth exchange uh, with our trainer and they still haven't compensated us. Yeah. Okay. So... Um... Just let me let me make one thing clear uh, for you. Like, okay, the Erasmus Plus, the youth exchanges, the training courses, um, it's about the people, okay? It's a project for the people, but it's done by them. 
So unfortunately, there are many organizations that uh, are, let's say, not the best. And, you know, you can report them eventually to your sending organization and you can uh, report them to the like to the person who's actually giving the funds and you can try to you know like explain to other people not to go there for anything uh i don't know how much time has passed usually for the compensation organization can take up to two months uh and it's usually on that i mean it it, it really depends you know like usually it's a word by mouth Okay, six months is quite a lot. I guess you should start taking legal action or like as the sending organization because that's definitely not normal. Mm, I, I don't know which is the organizations that uh, there's no need to write it because of uh, mm, it's also record being recorded. Uh, maybe I can just ask you which was the mm, like which was the country that was the program. Maybe you if you can tell me. Okay, Poland. So, I mean, you should contact your sending organization. Uh, so like the Greek one, and uh, they you should tell them to contact the national agency because this is not uh, not normal and you need to receive the money. Um, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, like uh, I don't know which was the sending organization, but it's a very delicate situation. Rather than that, word by mouth. So... I mean, if you ask me, not here because it's uh, publicly, but if you ask me in a private conversation, I can tell you some organizations that I, I really trust because I work with them and they are totally cool organizations. But definitely, if you if you hear of any trust, like very negative experience, you need to share it. You have all the tools to do it. Actually, it's important that you do it in order for people not to experience the same in the next part. What are some red flags in general? I uh, don't worry. Don't worry. If, uh, it's okay if you uh, get wild calitra. Um, so, what? Well, well, sorry. Red uh, flags. What about yeah? In general, the red flags. Uh, what would be considered from your point of view as someone who has worked inside? Okay. Look. Uh, generally. Um, as a when when you are a sending organization so you are the person who are sending the people you do the partnership uh, with organizations that you know and that you rely so it's important to have a very a good uh, organizations from the sending part so my suggestion is that like uh, if you want to go for an erasmus and you see that for example the organization that is supposed to send you is not really responsive Maybe like uh, you should start, uh, you know, like uh, taking the distances from that, of course, informing the, the organization or ask for clarification. I mean, that's that's the most important thing. I mean, I can tell you that uh, from our side as, as ECHO, uh, sometimes we devote way too much time uh, with the young people. But uh, I know that most of the people that go with us they are usually happy because uh, we are always trying to do the best as we can to accommodate everyone's uh, need as, as as much as we can, of course. Yeah. Um, if someone wants to work in this area, in this field, to have an internship at tech or anywhere, what should he expect as the experience and what kind of uh, skills should Look, you expect to develop? Uh -huh. uh, well, uh, it really depends on the kind of things that you want to do, okay? Because, uh, uh, I mean, within our organizations, we are uh, we are we have different uh, um, activities that we do. Sometimes we have desk research. Sometimes we have uh, maybe proposal writing. Sometimes we have implementation and facilitation. So, like, we usually ask the, the interns like or the people that wants to work with us, uh, which is the kind of things that they like to do the most. Of course, like in a, in addition to that, I always ask to anyone to try to think out of the box and to challenge themselves, not to stay in their bubbles. So try to you know like uh, you know 
force yourself sometimes to do something that you don't like to do because you might discover that you are very good at doing something and you will boost your confidence, self-confidence. Uh, I mean, usually, like my suggestion is start uh, um, volunteering, uh, contact some local organizations uh, because these kind of jobs, uh, it requires, you know, like uh, just willing to challenge yourself and to, to do it. Uh, Mm, if you want my honest opinion, I don't honestly care if someone is studying science or someone is studying political science, uh, uh, culture, psychologist or anything. It's like for these kind of projects, you need to be like really open minded and to be flexible, to accept that uh, not everyone thinks the way you do. And that's the beauty of it. You know, like when you can do this part, then you 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 have like the next step and then you can grow as a personal level on a personal level and you can you know like uh, discover that someone else's perspective it's might be even better than yours you know that's it's always like a qui pro quo i don't know if there is any other question mm. I, you can also write it in the chat if you don't feel like uh, if you don't feel like uh, speaking out loud. Okay. I have a question and I I want you to give me to give us like some examples of non-formal education. For example, I saw in your website that you uh, have done like uh, some games and this kind of thing so you can uh, give us a specific example of this yes of course of course so uh i will use one example that we had in uh in um okay in in the netherlands uh so so basically in the netherlands what we do what we did it was like um okay we divided the people um in groups and then we started asking them to pick up a, a topic that the uh, they would like to undertake on a human rights mm -hmm. and uh, we asked them to think about all the possible discrimination that could be on that point of view and uh, after doing that uh, uh, we just asked them and we were like uh, we were like okay think about that uh, you have to do some propaganda and you have to kind of make fun of the violation of the human rights mm -hmm. uh, and after you do that picture it, write a script, uh, and then record it with the phone. So you need to create uh, an actual video propaganda out of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, I mean, people got quite creative, you know, like, uh, yeah. so we, we literally asked that we gave them some guidelines and they, they did some, um, some videos on their own. So like, uh, there were some people who were like, uh, they were making fun of uh, slavism, you know, mm -hmm. and they were just <laughs> looking at it on the other perspective. And they were mm -hmm. like, uh, don't you see how annoying it is to, to, to do everything by your own? So like, be smart, buy a slave. And <laughs> it was like all this satira <laughs> about that. Yeah. No, you know, but uh, it's it's really important to do this part because uh, we are now in a, in a situation where whatever you say, it's being attacked, you know, politically correct uh, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's important to be aware of the problems that the minority are facing, but you 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 should be able to make fun of it uh, without uh, being, uh, you know, like uh, without yeah. m m being offensive uh, to the thing, because it's mm -hmm. just about of like uh, looking, uh, that's what the satire is about at the end of the day. Yeah. But uh, the 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 results that were out of these videos, for example, they were uh, definitely super nice. Or mm -hmm. another thing, it's like uh, we just make groups of people to foster team building, uh, and they just have a few minutes to decide uh, some gestures. So like uh, how to move on, uh, go to the right, go to the left, stop, go back. And mm -hmm. then they need to form a line and everyone is blindfolded except for the person on the back and the mm -hmm. person on the back needs to give instructions on how to reach another point of the room mm -hmm. without speaking yeah. so you basically need to 
trust people that you met for the first time mm. and uh, uh, hope that they will not make uh, they will that they will not hit you or something yeah, yeah but yeah. it's it's really funny i mean at the end of the day like people like this creates a safe environment for uh, for everyone and uh, it's important in the first two days uh, that you really pay attention on these things mm. so that people you know uh, like enjoy the moment uh, and they feel they belong to the community mm. and they feel like they can share what they are feeling and what they are thinking without feeling judged because mm. that's 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 a uh, that's an issue right now yeah it is mm -hmm. okay so yeah. i hope it was not too boring mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's very difficult to do like things virtually but uh, we still have this uh, this mm, this thing yeah. but yeah do it if you have the chance go for for it like do these projects it's life changing i see all these undergraduate students in the chat, I know some of them. And I'm sure they do have questions that they would like to ask. Why don't they ask them? They'll never find out the answer. Okay. Is there any more questions, Stefano? I mean, I don't know. I can leave you eventually my email if anyone it's uh, it's interested. If they would, uh, if they are a bit shy to write it here, uh, you can contact me here or like uh, you can. This is like our um, Instagram page, so you can also contact us through through that one. I mean, if you have questions, ask because uh, I mean it's worth it uh, i mean there is a huge world outside and it's waiting for you and like i mean you need to be able like to take your time but move move forward okay thank you very much stefano i don't think we we are at a point where we can conclude the meeting mm -hmm. if no other questions are asked so thank you very much Okay, thank, thank you. Very you. Much, Stefano. Have a nice thank nice evening. Thank you. I hope it was uh, mm -hmm. it was uh, helpful to everyone. It was very interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a nice thank evening. You very bye, much. Bye. 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 So, everyone, I think this concludes uh, the first dialogues. Mm -hmm. uh, would I would love to see you more active in uh, following dialogues mm -hmm. because it's all about you. The questions we ask, most of the time we kind of know the answer. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can't think uh, the questions that uh, someone from your perspective might have. Mm -hmm. So, Carmen and everybody, I think we can call it a night. And mm -hmm. we'll meet again at the next dialogues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everyone, uh, have a great night, afternoon, whatever it is. <laughs> have a nice uh, afternoon, guys. Eleni, Bye. are you raising your hand? Yes, I just like. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, I just like to ask uh, when about the second uh, mm -hmm. uh, intergenerational dialogue will be. It will be at the end of June. Okay, perfect. Okay, yeah. so Thank we you. will give you more specific. Mm, yeah, yeah, the they, details. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Just to plan, obviously, exams and... <laughs> and oh, ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So okay. thank you guys for being here and see you in the next inter intergenerational the dialogue. <laughs> so okay. have a nice evening. So. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.